What's up YouTube, it's Pico Blurred back again with another video. I'm gonna be talking about probably the most important things to have as a barber in 2024. Um, just some overall different tools and, and different things that I think that you should have in your arsenal um, when you're thinking about a beginning barbering um, and the longevity of your barber journey. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the rest of the video. Oh my god, is that Pico Blur? Now I'm not going to put any of this stuff in any particular order. Um, I'm just going to go off of kind of just the general things that I think every barber should uh, have um, as far as their like tools and, and everything that they need to do their job effectively. So my first thing to have is you need to have a good barber chair. Now this one is really expensive. Um, I obviously didn't start off using something like this. So I'm not saying that you need a barber chair of this quality. Um, but get you a good barber chair that has a hydraulic lip so you can lift up your, your clients um, without having to bend over and, and be hurting your back all the time. Um, you want a chair that has some sort of hydraulic, um, just so you can have them in the right positions when you are cutting the hair. It just makes your job a whole lot easier. So grab a chair, you can probably find them on Amazon. Um, and I'll leave a link to all the stuff um, that I put in this video, I'll leave a link in the description um, to go find that stuff, so go check it out if you are looking for any of that uh, particular stuff um, that I that I mentioned in here, but get you a good chair that has any sort of hydraulic lift on it, and preferably one that also reclines back, um, so when you're doing your, your razor work, um, they can be nice and comfortable. Um, and it puts you in a position where you're nice and comfortable. Also, not only does the client comfort, comfort, uh, uh, comfortability um, matter, but yours does too. Um, if you're gonna be doing this for a long time, you wanna make sure that you have the right posture um, so you're not ending up hurting yourself in the long term. So get you a good hydraulic reclining chair. Like I said, you can probably find one on Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, that's probably the most important thing I would say is getting a good chair. If you have the money and you are doing this and you know that you are going to be a barber in a couple years time, if you're doing this steady, you know, go ahead and get you a chair like mine. I'll also leave a, uh, my chair in the description below. Um, fortunately I was, you know, I've been doing this uh, for a while now, so I was able to upgrade my chair and I got a beautiful chair like this. Um, but I didn't start off with, with a chair nearly this quality, um, but get you a good chair. I'm not talking about like one of these, like an office chair, this is not gonna work, or like a regular like kitchen chair. Um, definitely don't wanna be using that long term. If, that, if that's all you got for now, like if you're working in a garage or something and that's the only chair you have, make it work until you can actually get a hydraulic chair. Um, they're not too expensive, so get you one of those for sure. Um, another most important thing that you're gonna wanna get is a good barber cape. Um, they have a bunch on Amazon. I don't really like getting them from Amazon just because the quality, um, for one, isn't there usually, and they're usually not as big. Um, I usually get my barber capes from Illusion. Um, they're one of like the best barber cape companies in my opinion. They have all kinds of colorways. You can customize stuff. Um, they just have all kinds of options and the material on them is super high quality and they're uh, water resistant. So if you're doing like hair services where you use a lot of water, um, it's not going to drench your client. It's going to keep them pretty dry. So I recommend getting, for my opinion, I love illusion capes. That's I-L-L-U-Z-I-E-N. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but get you a good barber cape, one that's big enough for your clients, um, both adults and children. Um, 
and one that's gonna be gonna be good quality. That's probably one of the most important things, like your what you should have as a barber, because you don't want your client being covered in hair and being all itchy. Um, I see a lot of beginner barbers, and they'll just sit their client down in a t-shirt and then start cutting their hair. Meanwhile, your client's probably itchy as anything. They got hair going in their collar of their shirt. They got hair all over them. Um, and it's just not good, uh, you know, especially if you have clients complaining like, oh man, I'm itchy. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want your clients complaining about anything. So get you a good barber cape. Um, I have the barber cape that has elastic clips. Um, I just like these better than the snap-ons, but I will say these, I love them, but they're not good for your your heavier set clients, your clients with, with bigger necks. So I found that these um, are kind of a little bit too tight and they don't really stretch like that. They stretch, but not to that extent. Um, and they're gonna leave like, it's gonna be too tight for your clients that, ha that are a, a bit heavier. Um, so I would recommend getting one of these elastic ones if you like these they're super easily adjustable so that's why i like them for like my smaller clients but if you have bigger clients i'd recommend getting a cape that has the um let me see if i can find them on here they're somewhere <laughs> give me a second okay yeah so i'd recommend getting a cape with the snap-ons um, they just have a little like more space um, and so it's better for your bigger clients because it's not going to be strangling their neck um, it's not going to be too tight they for some reason the snap-ons are a little bit longer um, like as far as like circumference wise for the neck than the than the elastic uh, band so get you at least one of each just so you have one for your your normal clients and then one for your your bigger guys um it's definitely gonna make them feel more comfortable in the long run so you know, get you uh, a couple types of capes and then the next thing along with your capes you're gonna want to have good neck strips i get my neck strips from level three um i like the pink ones because it it matches all my colorways but you can have uh, any color. Any kind of neck strip um, should do. I just like these ones because they're stretchy and then they have this blue bit on it. Um, when you take the neck strip out, the blue bits stick together so it holds on uh, It holds on to each other so it doesn't fall off the neck. Um, you'll see some neck strips that don't have that and so you gotta kinda like tie them. Uh, I like these just because they stick. It's super simple. You you stretch it out and then you stick them together and then it's on the neck and then you put your cape around it. But definitely what are gonna have uh, neck strips. Um, like I said, I've also so along with with new uh, barbers not using capes. I've seen a lot of barbers that have capes but they're not using neck strips. And so that's. Uh, unsanitary and it gets kind of disgusting because if you're using this cape for multiple clients it's going to have hair on it um and so the neck strips are basically going to keep the neck or the cape from contacting the client's skin um which is going to be way more sanitary it's going to keep your clients way cleaner um and they're going to have peace of mind that you're not using dirty stuff on them so definitely want to have neck strips with your cape it's a must-have the next thing you're gonna want to make sure to get a lot of and they have them in bulk um, is your barbicide most important thing as far as sanitation and sanitizing all your your uh, implements all your combs your brushes your your clipper guards you need barbicide because um, obviously you want to have all your stuff clean and sanitized. You don't want to be mixing uh, different clients using dirty tools. Um, it's just not good. You're going to transfer different uh, stuff that one client might have and the other doesn't. Um, and it's just dirty. You, you, you want to have all your stuff clean and sanitized. You don't want to be transferring anything over to every client. So get you some Barberside. 
Um, like I said, they do come in bulk. So I got a big tub from Amazon and it's huge. It's like a, a huge container. So I'm pretty much set for a long time. Um, they have smaller bottles, which are a bit cheaper, but you might as well just get the big one since you're gonna be using it every week. Um, if you guys have seen my other video talking about um, how to sanitize and clean all your stuff, you'll know that I change my barber side once a week. So every Sunday, I go ahead and replace uh, my barber side mixture just to make sure that it's potent enough to clean and do what it's supposed to. Um, so definitely you need some barbicide or any type of uh, tool um, disinfecting because you, you don't want your stuff being dirty. It's just, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. That's one of the major things as far as barbering is keeping your stuff sanitized. So along with the barbicide, um, I recommend getting you a chair cleaner. So this is what I use to clean my chair. It's like a, um, uh, what is it called? It's like a mister, a micro mister. Um, and I just put probably one of the best cleaners uh, that I know of, um, Ship Shape. It just cleans all your surfaces. Um, it's for barbering, it's for barbershop and, and hair salon. So Ship Shape, get you some of that to clean your chair. It disinfects your chair um, so you know that your clients are getting um, a fresh, clean chair, uh, disinfected, ready to go. And that's Ship Shape. Again, you can find this stuff on Amazon. I'll drop a link in the description. Ship Shape, Barberside, disinfecting. Disinfection is super important in the barbering, in the beauty industry. So you definitely need to get you some disinfectants. And again, you might be asking yourself, well, how am I supposed to disinfect and clean my clippers and my trimmers? Obviously, well, I don't know if it's that obvious, but for my new barbers, do not put your clippers in barbicide. You cannot put your, your blades in water. Um, it will destroy them, it will rust them, it'll make sure that it's not working. So do not, and I repeat this with super exclamation points, do not even put your blades anywhere near water. It's gonna ruin your stuff. So get you a spray disinfectant. Andy's Cool Care, they have um, Oster Cool Care Spray Disinfectant. Um, again, check out, I'll link my uh, previous video on how to deep clean your clippers and your, your trimmers. Um, but get you some of this to spray on after every client. Disinfection is important. So after every client, you wipe off your clippers and your trimmers and you spray them with this. Leave it on for about 10 minutes um, and then it should be all disinfected and you should be good to go. Get you some of this, you need it. And so now we finally got rid of all the kind of base stuff uh, um, that I think that you guys need. Um, and obviously you can't be cutting hair and barbering without your tools. Um, so definitely gonna need to get you a pair of clippers and a pair of trimmers. Um, you need both because they do different things. Clippers is for if you're cutting the hair with a lot of bulk. Um, you're gonna need clippers to take care of your, the gent, like the most of your haircut. Um, the trimmers are gonna be for your edge ups, setting in your bald line if you use them that way. Um, stuff like that. So they are different. Um, if you didn't know about the difference between them, um, especially if you're, if you're brand new, never even touched uh, a clipper or trimmer, they are for different aspects of the haircut. So get you a clipper for the main haircut and then a trimmer for your edge ups. Um, and then you're gonna need clipper guards for your clipper. Um, I use, they're like a wall premium guard. That's what they are. So they have these metal clips, so they're not going to fall off. Um, usually if you get like clippers, uh, especially cheap ones, they come with a set of 
really cheap plastic um, guards and they're most, they, they like to fall off a lot. So um, I recommend getting some sort of wall premium guard just so it's gonna stay on there um, and not come off because of these metal clips. It kind of locks them in place and so you don't have to worry about them. And these, so wall premium guards, they usually fit any Babyliss, any Gamma, um, any wall, uh, any style craft clipper. So they're pretty, they're pretty general. They, they can fit on any of these, uh, any of these types of clippers, whether it be wall, Babyliss, Gamma, style craft. Um, I believe JRL as well, but I'm not sure. Um, Andes is a little bit different. They fit the magnetic like Andes and Oster guards. Um, so don't get one of those. If you're using a Babyliss um, or if you're using like a Stylecraft or Gamma, get you some wall premium guards. And you don't have to spend a whole bunch on clippers. Yes, I have nice clippers. Um, and they're, you know, obviously they're really expensive and my nice trimmers, my trimmers are really expensive, but you don't have to start off that way. When I started, I didn't have all this stuff. I'm gonna show you with uh, what I started with because, I mean, this is gonna, this is gonna get you through it. It's not gonna be something super crazy. It's gonna be corded probably, but I started with these. My Oster speed lines are like Oster fast speeds. And I love these things, man. If they, you know, they have a cordless version now, which I heard isn't as good, but these are the classics. I feel like every barber started with something like this or like a Andy's, um, Andy's master or like a, a wall senior. Everybody started with something like this. Um, so I'd recommend getting a good pair of cheap corded clippers because if you have the expensive stuff, if you never held anything and you end up dropping them, that's gonna be an expensive break. <laughs> These are super cheap, they're super durable, so if you do drop them, most of the time they're gonna be okay. And I switched the blades out. I have a gold and ceramic blade so they don't overheat um, and so they last a long time. And the corded, the corded clippers back in the day, they're super powerful, so you don't even have to worry about anything like that. Um, and I wouldn't recommend, so I would recommend these over getting some super cheap uh, Walmart clipper. I've used cheap Walmart clippers before. Um, that's something that everybody I think starts with is just some cheap, <laughs> cheap sort of Walmart clippers. But I would recommend getting one of these. Um, you can find them on Amazon for pretty cheap, probably around like $30, $40, um, which is super cheap in, in comparison to those. Those are running like, you know, 150 to 200, even 300 sometimes. So I recommend getting something like this. Um, you're not gonna be worried about dropping them if you're new. Um, they're super easy to use. You can, you know, plug them in and they're gonna run forever um, as long as you take care of them. So get you something like this or an Andy's Master or, or a Wall Senior and you'll be good to go. You don't need to be having all the bells and whistles just yet, especially if you're just starting out. Once you have a few reps um, and you start making money probably, then think about getting you something uh, a bit more expensive uh, if you want it. You, you know, there's some barbers even to this day that still use that still use these Oscar speed lines. Um, like I said, they're great clippers. I love them. That's why I got to keep them. I'll probably end up framing them or something, putting them in a, in a, you know, <laughs> like a keepsake, because these are super important to me. These were my first real barber clippers, so they have a special place in my heart. So I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna keep these. And then you have your corded trimmers. Now I don't have the head right now because I had to replace another um, trimmer, but, and then these don't come skeleton like this. I skeleton these myself to give uh, a, a bit more space and a bit more breathing room to the trimmer. Um, obviously with all the new stuff now, you see they already come pre, they already come pre um, skeleton, that's new. They, you used to have to skeleton all your clippers like this. Um, there was nothing like skeletons uh, back in the day. So I went ahead and did this myself, got it skeletoned. 
um, but you can find trimmers like this. Uh, this is the Andes uh, T-Liner Blackout Edition. Um, again, super, super great trimmer, especially for beginners. Um, and it's not gonna run you uh, super expensive. So, you know, this trimmer and this clipper is gonna run you cheaper than getting one of these tools. <laughs> you, you can have all, like both of those for less than one of these tools. Um, so that's a good thing to have. Uh, like I said, once, once you start becoming more into yourself and you really find the passion um, and you keep going and you start making money, then get you a, a wireless clipper um, just because you know that you are in this. You, you know you're in it for the long run. So then you can start upgrading all your tools or whatever. But I, I would recommend starting with something like that. And again, guys, I can't stress this enough. You don't need to get all the most expensive stuff. If you're just starting out, you don't need to start buying all the stuff that you see on Instagram or that you see other YouTube uh, barbers using. Um, you don't need it. Start up with something cheap, put in a couple years, and then upgrade your stuff. You don't need all the all the, the brand new stuff. You don't need the, the Lamborghini starting off if you're not making any money. Um, if you're brand new, you've never driven a car before. You don't want a super fancy sports car. Same thing with barbering. You don't want all the, the expensive tools because one, you need to be passionate about this. You need to know that you're gonna be doing this long term to have those tools. You don't need something crazy. Just because you have the tools isn't gonna make you have the skill. You need the skill first, and then you can get the better tools. Um, it kind of goes hand in hand. You know, good barbers, they can cut with anything. The, the, tool, the new tools, the new expensive tools, just enhance that. But if you don't have the skill first, those tools aren't gonna help you. So start up with something cheap, get your practice in, get your reps in, make sure that you have the skill and then you can start getting better clippers that's gonna enhance your cuts to the next level. Um, another thing that I think is super important is getting you a good razor holder. Uh, I'm not saying like good as in like, well, just get you a, a razor holder that holds razors um, because straight razor is an important part of your haircut. It's just gonna bring your edge ups to the next level. It's gonna make it super sharp. Your beard lineups are gonna be super sharp. It's just gonna make it, it's gonna bring it to that next level. A trimmer can get the job done um, good enough, but if you wanna bring it more elevated, get you a razor holder so you can hold your razors. And here's my razors that I use. I use Derby Premiums. They're, they're fine for what they are. I found that some some boxes, um, you'll have hit and miss uh, razors. So some, some will be super sharp, some will be a little bit dull, and then some get dull pretty quick. Um, I might end up trying to find some new razors, um, like Dorco Primes or something like that. They're a bit more expensive, that's why I don't usually get those. Um, starting out, I'd say get you some Derby Premiums. You can find them on Amazon for really cheap. You have like, I think I got like four boxes um, of a hundred razors and they're already pre-broken. You don't have to break these. They're already pre-broken. Um, so you just slap them in your in your razor holder and they're, they're good to go and they're pre, they're all uh, individually wrapped. So super clean, super sanitary um, and they're all good to go. You don't have to like break them and then wonder what you're gonna do with the other set of razors. So that's why I like these Derby Premiums. Um, it's just hit, like I said, it's just hit and miss sometimes with them. Some can be super sharp, some can be a little bit dull. Um, it just is what it is with these uh, manufacturers of blades. They make a, a whole bunch of blades, so it's gonna happen um, when they're when they're making them at the factory. But Derby Premiums, they're super cheap on Amazon. You can get like a four pack for like I don't know, twenty, thirty dollars, I think. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll leave it in the description below, but get you some razors. It's gonna bring your edge ups to the next level. You're definitely gonna want some. And then as far as hair cutting, clipper, using your clippers is one skill, um, but you don't wanna be just a one skill barber that can't cut the top of the head. You need to invest in some good shears. 
um, so you can learn how to cut the top of the head. It's going to get you more clients. You're going to be more well-rounded. You're not going to be one of those barbers that can only give a fade and then can't touch the top. They're scared of touching the top of the head um, and using shears. So get you some shears, practice working on them. And I'll give you a, a little, a short little rundown. I'm not going to go super in depth on how to use shears, but something simple that you need to practice is holding your shears. So they have notches in them for your finger placements. I like putting my ring, my right ring finger um, in the whole rest of your pinky on the end. And then you have your fingers like this. So basically you're gonna rest in this position. And so there's a moving blade and a steel blade. Your steel blade is where your ring finger and your pinky is holding it. And then your moving blade is gonna be your thumb. And you wanna practice moving that thumb without moving your steel blade, without moving the blade that's connected to your ring and your pinky. Um, that's how you wanna cut. You don't wanna be opening like this because then it's gonna be less accurate. Um, you wanna have control of your blade at all times. So try practice moving your thumb, moving that moving blade without using, without moving your steel blade. Um, that's how you want to cut the hair and you can use it any direction as long as you're doing that. That's going to give you the most control and the most accurate hair cutting. Um, that's just a little bit of, of uh, teaching you guys how to use your shears, but you definitely want to get you a good set of shears that are sharp enough to cut the hair. Um, if you get like Walmart clippers, they usually come with a pair of shears and they're not good. They push the hair out of the way. They're not sharp, so they can't cut the hair uh, really well at all. So. Get you a, a good pair. Um, I'd say probably spend upwards of 50 to $100 on a good sharp pair and you should be set. You don't need uh, something super crazy like some Mitsutani's or something like that they are gonna run you thousands of dollars. You don't need it. Get you a good pair for around 50 to $100 and you'll be set. You'll be able to cut the hair super sharp um, and, and super uh, accurate. So get you a good pair of shoes. Oh, and then I forgot to mention that if you get clippers, um, I don't remember if the old ones, like the quarter ones come with them. Um, it's been a while since I bought something like that, but the new clippers usually come with clipper oil. But if it doesn't come with clipper oil, get you some clipper oil. Um, it'll help your blades run uh, smoother. And they recommend you oiling your clippers because it'll um, maintain them for a long time. If you don't use clipper oil and you're just cutting without putting, without blading, without oiling up your blades, it's going to ruin your clippers. You need to be oiling your blades so they run effectively and they last longer. They won't heat up as fast and it creates less tension, it creates less friction on the blades, so your blades are gonna last longer. So get you some oil for your blades so that you can you can make these last way longer. Um, <laughs> if you don't, they're gonna they're gonna be ruined pretty quickly. So and last but not least, well I say last, I'll probably add something else in here as well. Just something that I think um, <laughs> it helps me become a better barber. But so the last kind of important stuff is getting you a good set of combs. Um, they have a set of these blue ones on Amazon. They're just regular regular combs, nothing too special, but you can have, you can get a set for super cheap. Um, and they're pretty strong. They're pretty good. Uh, so get you a good number of combs just so you can use them without having to worry about like, if you, for example, if you have one comb and you have to keep cleaning them between clients, um, it's going to take you a little bit longer and then you're going to be stressing because what if you forget to clean it and then you use it on another, another client, it's going to be unsanitary. So get you a lot of combs that you can clean in barberside, but then you still have extra to use on your next client or another client after that. So get you a lot of combs. Um, and then I have special combs that I use for different purposes. So this comb, I like using it if I'm doing a lot of sectioning because these teeth are way wider. So when you put it in the hair, it's gonna separate the hair more so you can get cleaner sections that way. 
So that's why I like this wider teeth comb. And then you use the, the shorter teeth, the um, closer teeth, so you can get better tension when you're pulling up the hair to cut it. Um, and then I have one of these combs, which is kind of the same thing, except it has this shorter tooth in it. So when you're sectioning, you can really tell Kind of the same kind of the same thing as these wider teeth but you have a point exactly where you know that you're going to put in that um that section so you can easily part the hair um so these are kind of like my special combs you don't need something like that if you're just starting off but i don't know it for me it's easier to section that way so if you want to invest in a comb like this i'd probably recommend getting something like this um, especially if you're working on sectioning, it's going to help you out to section uh, easier and better. And then you're going to want to get a bigger comb like this, specifically for clipper over comb. Um, the bigger ones are better. It's kind of hard to clipper over comb if you have something this small because the blade is so big. So you might end up cutting hair that you don't want to. So something like this, something bigger, like a um, flat top comb. That's what they're called, flat top combs. It's gonna help you uh, keep the blade from touching any hair that you don't want cut. So get you a, a big flat top comb for your clipper over comb work. Um, so you can protect <laughs> the rest of the hair from getting cut. Uh, say for example, if you're doing clipper over comb and you're using a regular comb and your, your clipper blade goes past the teeth, into the, the top hair that you don't want to cut, you're going to leave gaps and you're going to gash the person's hair um, or like scalp them and you don't want that happening. So get you a bigger comb so it's safer and your, your, your blades aren't going to go past the teeth and end up cutting something that you don't want. But that's pretty much going to do it for the, the main stuff that I recommend you getting. Um, you can get something like this uh, which is ring lights and they come with stands usually. I have two of them. Just so you can have good lighting. Um, lighting is super important as far as cutting hair uh, so you can see what you're doing. If you're in a garage and there's not much light, it's gonna be harder to see all the details clearly um, when you're doing specific like haircuts like fades and whatever. You're not gonna be able to see the dark spots very well. Um, it's harder to see the hair pattern and stuff like that. So you want good lighting. In my room, in my studio, I ended up changing these lights to bright white, almost LED lights. Um, so I get good lighting in the room. Usually the fans come with like fluorescent lights that are like yellow tinted. So I got the, the brightest bulb that they have in super bright white so that you can see everything. And then I have two ring lights, one coming from each side. Um, so I have light all the way around my client. I can easily see uh, what I'm doing. I can see the hair perfectly. So it, all the, the rest of the stuff that I said is super important. These are kind of just to, to make your hair cutting easier, especially if you're in a place like a garage that doesn't have the best lighting. Um, so not super important, but I would recommend getting a ring light. Um, you can find them on Amazon for around 120, I think. I have newer, they're called newer N-E-W-E-R, I think, something like that. Um, but you can find them pretty cheap on Amazon. Uh, and then set it up like this so that you have the best lighting. Another thing um, I think is pretty important is either having like a TV um, or some sort of speaker so you can play music. It's a bit awkward if your client is just sitting here. Um, and if, especially if you don't talk, if you're not a big talker or if they don't talk and you're kind of just sitting there in silence, it can get a bit awkward. Um, so, I'd recommend playing music. Get you a small speaker. If you can't get a TV, get you a small speaker that you can hook up your phone and you can play music just so there's a bit of background noise. Um, if you are not talking, you can still have music um, to make the, the client a bit more comfortable, even to make you a bit more comfortable. Um, if you're cutting and you feel awkward, I feel like it's going to throw your kind of uh, energy to the window. Um, and then you're not going to cut as good. So you want to be as comfortable and as confident as possible. Get you some sort of background noise so you can lock in and get that haircut done. 
But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, check out some of the stuff that I dropped in the description if you didn't know that you needed it or if you were looking for something like that and you didn't know where to find it. Hopefully I can help you guys um, set up your, your station and set up the tools that you need, uh, stuff that you need to be either begin or enhance your barbering um, journey, enhance your tools, uh, stuff like that, your setup. You wanna have a good setup to give the best quality service, and then your clients are gonna wanna come back because you're offering such good service. You have all the, the good stuff um, to get them fresh, to get, to get them right, to give them confidence that they're walking out with the best experience, the best service that they can. Um, you haven't already, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Help support me. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers um, to fully get monetized. That's one of my biggest goals right now is to get fully monetized. So if you guys can help me out, go support my channel, hit that subscribe button. Um, and I thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing for me, supporting me, uh, watching my stuff. And hopefully I can help you guys. Um, I just wanna help you guys grow in your in your barbering career um you know especially for the beginners if you're new if you don't have you know someone to look up to if you don't have someone telling you here this is what you need this is what you don't need you don't need all this fancy stuff um i want to do that for you guys i want to be there for you guys if you have questions i want to be there to help you guys and and kind of motivate you to pursue this career and to start actually you know seeing some progress so thank you guys again it's your boy Pico Blur, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.